by my clock downstairs, so that's pretty good. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. At this time, let us receive uh, the pastor of the Cathedral of Faith Church uh, in Detroit, Michigan, our brother and evangelist for the week, Dr. J. Herbert Hinkle, Jr. Let's receive him. Thank you so much. Turn to your neighbor and hug them and say, bless you with love and peace. You may be seated. It's exciting to be here once again with uh, my brother who is excited and who's excited about the ministry and who's doing a terrific job. And of course, it's always good to just keep company. We, we do talk quite a bit on the phone, but it's nothing like seeing him. And uh, he's looking better than the last time I saw him, so he must be doing pretty good. Amen. Uh, he doesn't look as tired. I get on him for running so much. I'm just not going to do that. Amen. I, I've, I've had my day for that. Praise the Lord. I picked up a, a button here, and I'm want to make some buttons when I get back home so this is good I take this back with me amen it's always good to see my aunt uh, also and to see that she's still looking good amen I am excited about Jesus and I'm excited about what the Lord is doing and what he's uh, going to do Open your Bibles tonight to the book of St. Luke, chapter 12. Beginning with verse 16, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have what? No room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do, I will pull down my barns and build what? And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years, Take thine ease, eat, drink, and what? But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Amen. I want to share with you this subject, the big mistake. Let's repeat that, the big mistake. You may be seated. Are you aware of all the gaps in your life? What I have versus what I want? Where I am in my life versus where I think I should be? Are you aware of um, the real problems that eat away at the core of my being? But God, are you aware? I, I, I pray and I, I talk to you, but are you really aware of what I'm going through? Are you aware of uh, the fact that I have trouble making ends meet? I seem to have more month than money. God, are you aware of, of my bank account balance, my cash on hand? God, are, are you really aware of my physique? Because I, I seem to have a, a problem between my button and my buttonhole even. God, are you aware that that 
I'm always in, in a twist. I'm always frustrated by what I see versus what I can really afford. God, I see things I, I want. I, I go, through, go to the mall and I walk through the mall and I see so much I want. And, and God, you know it's Easter season and, and the other members of the church are going to get their outfits. And Lord, I, I thought I'd tell you that I plan to spend your money this week. It, it is all right, I mean, if I use your tithe. You understand, it is all right if I, if I spend what is holy. God, you, you know my heart. I, I don't care what I say with my lips. For my heart and my lips don't always agree. Sometimes I speak with my lips, but my heart is far from it. God, are you aware? And I thought I would, I would call to your attention tonight that, that really you don't realize what your real problems are. First of all, you, you, you don't understand that you have a problem with expectation. You have a problem with satisfaction. You have a problem that you watch the Joneses and the Johnsons too much. God, you, you, you are too disturbed over things, over cars, over homes, over clothes over vacation in the sun where you can snorkel and shop. I'm wondering tonight, can you snap the trap? Are you in the trap of things that, that rust, that wear out, that wither, that wrinkle, that get weak and grow old and out of style. Aren't, aren't we really to watch in this Christian pilgrimage materialism with its empty promises and its false claims? Aren't we to watch the temptations of life and especially the temptation to relate more to things, to trust things than we do people. When people, when we get so caught up in, 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 in the worship of things, whether it's at the conscious level or the subliminal level, we soon make things out of people. Out of those that we are married to, they, they become a thing for us. Out of our friends, they become things to us. Out of our people, and, and we only we only interested in using them for our advancement. And when it appears that we cannot use them anymore, we resign our relationship with them because we look at them as things made out of bones, out of flesh, out of hair and fingernails. That, that it's not wrong with having things within themselves because the Lord teaches us that he will give us the desires of our heart. He said that he that spared not his own son will he not freely with him give us all things. So things are not wrong within themselves, but, and I don't want to suggest to you tonight that I've come to preach a negative gospel. I, I don't want to suggest to you that it's anything wrong with money because that has been the age old problem in the church. 
we've been hypocritical and we've gone and enlisted our names on some roles, membership roles at churches where preachers would tell you you don't need things. In fact, they, they, they lacking money always to filthy lucre. But for some reason, before the end of the service, uh, they want you to leave some filthy lucre with them. So while they preach against it, they're looking for it. And, and I found out that folk who have that negative attitude toward money either have one or the other problem. And that is that they're jealous that you might have some money and they don't have it. Secondly, they are hypocritical in their appreciation of the blessings of the Lord. And so I don't want to suggest a negative reaction tonight because it is God who gives us power to get well. The Lord doesn't care what you have as long as you recognize where it came from. God, God wants us to have beautiful clothing. God wants us to have the, the prettiest architecturally designed home that we could have. God does not intend that we lose a sense of pride as long as our pride does not become haughty. As long as we don't think more of ourselves than we ought. He does not want us to magnify what we have over the interpersonal relationship of the fellowship in the body of Christ. Come on, help me out here. God is not, a, not, a, not opposed to you having pleasure because the Bible teaches us that he has richly given us all things to enjoy. Can I get some help now? He wants us to have pretty and practical things he will deliver them to us, but, but he also wants us to take an examination. He wants, us, he wants us to understand that our lives are in order and judged by the inside out and not outside in. He wants us to look within ourselves so that we will not become guilty of making the big mistake. For this, this story is about a man who made the big mistake. It begins, it, it's simple here, you, you can follow it. It's right here in, in verse 13. Jesus had been ministering to the people. Jesus had talked to the people about needs, about trusting him, and, and in the midst of of this of this service or at the end of the service at the end of his ministering when when his mind should have been focused on what Jesus had been talking about you you know how people can get become so disturbing some of us are happy in church and shouting and they want to bring up something that's irrelevant at that moment it's a time and a place for everything but when it's worship time when it's consecration time when it's ministering time when it's word time your mind ought to be focused on the God of the universe and so when Jesus had finished he runs to Jesus with a request and this request was for Jesus to make a judicial decision this man uh, was having a dispute with his own brother that, that, that did not even fall within the confines of the word that Jesus had spoken. Uh, and here he comes with this dispute and, and he knew what the law was that two-thirds of the inheritance was to be left with the older brother but he comes he comes to jesus perhaps he was a man in the congregation uh, whose mind was focused on dad's death you know you can get so preoccupied with the cares of the world until you can't see the christ 
And this man was, was, was preoccupied with wealth, with money, with property. And, and he comes to Jesus and, 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 and in verse 13 and said, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. There was no prelude to this conversation. Jesus was not the judicial body of his day. The Sanhedrin council was the appeal council. And yet he goes to church. It is not even stated that he was a member of Jesus' group. Because you know sometimes we bring folk in to disturb the pastor who's not even a member of the kingdom. And here he was. He, he goes to Jesus and Jesus bluntly deals with that man and said, man, what are you talking about? Who made me a judge for me to divide your substance? Who put me over you? That's, that's not my problem. That's not my, that's not my occupation. I came to minister. But Jesus, Jesus with his, with his x-ray vision, could look beyond the epidermis and see the heart. He could look beyond the lips and see the living questions. He could look beyond the appearance and see the problem. And he said, man, your problem is deeper than what you are stating. You have a problem with covetousness. You better watch it. And, and, and I found out, I found out, I found out that when folk want to rob from God, they have a spiritual problem. Oh, if you can't say amen, just say ouch and I understand. They, they, they have a spiritual problem. This man exposes his spiritual problem, covetousness. It's bad when you are covetous. There are too many folk who sit up in church who are covetous of one another, who are covetous of what someone else has, what the pastor has. And let me tell you a key to being blessed. You learn how to bless folk that have something. When I was a boy, young man, I used to look at large homes, ride the bus, to look at large homes and I'd bless them. I, I went to my first time to Beverly Hills. I drove around and I looked at those large homes, mansions. I said, I don't know who's in there, Lord, but bless whoever's behind that. Because when you bless things, the Lord will bless you even more. This man had a problem he had a problem with covetousness. You can tell he had no allegiance to the faith because if he had, he would have known that our Heavenly Father watches over us. That, that my God shall supply all of my needs. He would have known that God does not forsake us. He does not leave us alone. And you don't, have to, you don't have to just read from the New Testament. You can go to David's house and, David, what is your impression of God? He said, well, the Lord is my shepherd. And, 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 and I, I shall not want, that's a God of abundance. Even when he, when he fills my cup, it runs over. My, my God, my God, my God, I, I, I got some news for you. I've never seen the righteous forsaker. Nor his seed, I'm going to get through in a few minutes if you come on. Nor his seed begging bread. Jesus, is, it cannot be limited to any one covenant. He expands the old and the new. He exposes himself to his people in both. Go down to Abram's house and the Bible tells you that, that he was rich in cattle and in silver and gold. Go, go to Paul's house, he'll tell you, not that I needed it, 
but God supplies it anyway. God takes care. And so, so here this man was. Here this man was approaching Jesus. And I want to stick a needle here so that you will not feel like Jesus is against aggressiveness. He's not against aggressiveness. He's not against creativity. He's not against you going out, making something of your life. He wants you to be at the top. After all, it was he who started careers. It was he who started uh, the first band. It was he who organized the first choir. But here this man was aggressive. So Jesus said, let, let me just talk with you just a few moments, not much. He said, I want to present to you some parabolical language. A little story that you can put your teeth in. There was a man one day who had a farm and brought forth plentiful land. And, 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 and after he had brought it forth, in other words, he, he sat down and said uh, within himself, what shall I do? Look at how many times he uses I. What shall I do? I have no room. This will I do. I will pull down my bonds. I will bestow. I will say to my soul. In other words, his, his affirmation was I and my. What shall I do? I have my fruits. This will I do. I will pull down my bones. Huh? He said, he said, uh, he said I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. And you know the man made some mistakes and the first mistake was he did not even thank God. You can plant a seed anywhere in the ground, but you can't make that seed come up. God has this germinating process where that seed dies in the ground. And, and it does not matter if God did not allow the rain to fall. I don't care what kind of fertilizer you use. God produces uh, the harvest seed time and harvest time this man not only did not thank God and I, I want to tell you tonight whatever you have you have it because God gave it to you you ought to take out some time to thank the Lord for when praises go up y'all heard about it didn't you blessings come down Second land, the man could not have raised that whole crop by himself. Somebody else had to help him. He did not even mention those who had been involved in the process. He did not mention giving anybody else anything. When you're selfish and egotistical, I want you to know that the Lord cannot use you. This man, this man had a terrible heart. Just my possession. This man uh, perhaps was created, constructive, but not courteous. He does not, God does not speak against character. God is not speaking against what the man had earned. But God was letting him know that you must be accountable to your creator for whatever you have tonight. And this man's big mistake was selfishness, self-indulgence, lack of appreciation. The problem of covetousness tonight is that it is a lust so deep until things become 
more important than God. The job that I work on, and some of us are crazy enough to retire and get another job on Sunday. I've never been able to understand that to save my life. We go and volunteer on Sunday, and then we say, you know, we have to work on Sunday. Oh, y'all won't say amen there, huh? Our trouble is we, we have an intense appetite for things, for gaining a passion for pleasure. And I want to close tonight by telling you that uh, no man can serve two masters. You will either love one and uh, hate the other. And so this man had brought forth a plentiful land. And he said, what shall I do? And uh, I don't have any room to, to bestow my goods. He did not even recognize that there were some folk in prison that needed a donation. Mm, oh Lord. And uh, the man was planning for his future. Yeah, but he forgot about his present situation. And he forgot also that David said, My times are in thy hand. Mm, oh Lord, I learned a long time ago that uh, as you make your plans, you better include if the Lord wills. Mm, I'll do this or that uh, if the Lord wills. Yeah, Solomon said, Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is not promised. Mm -hmm. What is your life but a vapor? And you know that's not really water. That's what comes up out of water. That appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Mm, oh yeah oh that man talked to him but his trouble was he talked to himself and didn't talk to God mm, I wish I had a witness here and uh, that night uh, when he went to bed yeah mm, the Bible said uh, that God said uh, the fool the soul it required of thee mm, uh, oh the Lord was saying uh, fool you have money in your pocket but your soul is empty mm, fool you have food in your pantry but your soul is hungry and blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness Oh Lord, fool, you have clothes on your back, but your soul is empty. Oh yeah, your soul is naked right now. Fool, you have a fine house, but your soul is outdoors here. Yeah. Fool, you made your plan, uh, but you forgot about uh, in all thy ways. Mm -mm -mm. Acknowledge me, and oh, yeah, I will. Y'all don't hear me. Oh, I will direct your path. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Fool, you forgot I said, uh, lean not uh, to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, uh, fool, your plans are counterfeit.
counterfeit your plans are synthetic here your plans are pathetic here your plans are substitute here fool fool it's dying time and I'm gonna tell you tonight you better be careful how you make your plan take the Lord along with you oh everywhere you go tell the Lord Lord lead me do y'all hear me oh, walk with me oh, walk with me all along this tedious journey oh, Lord, don't be a fool tonight oh, yes the fools were left outdoors when the bridegroom came you better get some holy ghost you better get some oil in your lamps tonight oh yeah oh yes you better tell the Lord feel me loud With your holy ghost, uh, uh, feel me, the Lord. I want to be what you want me to be. Tell the Lord, uh, use me, Lord, in my service. Uh, uh, draw me nearer. Every day, you better be careful. You better be careful when you decide to stay home. You better be careful when you say goodbye to the church. You better be careful when you take a spiritual vacation. The devil never goes on vacation. He's always like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You better be careful when you walk out mad with somebody. The Lord might come and say, Fool! Ah, fool! That's enough tonight. Hallelujah. Stand upon your feet. Come on, praise God. Give God some praises. Hallelujah. 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 Maybe some of you went all day long and didn't thank the Lord. Come on, thank him tonight. Thank him because he brought you here. You might not have everything you want, but you got what you need. Tell him thank you for it. Still got eyes to see. Still got ears to hear. Still got feet to walk with. Still got arms to praise him. Got a mouth to speak with. Got a heart to live with. Tell him thank you. You got something you can thank him for. Has he been good to you? Has he really been good? Did he answer your prayers? Did he give you a job? Tell him thank you tonight. Gave you a church to worship in. Tell him thank you tonight. Gave you a pastor you can call on. Tell him thank you tonight. You ought to think of something special that you can thank God for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you. Thank you. There's a fresh anointing in this place. There's a fresh anointing in this place. Just say Holy Ghost, fall down 
on me there's a fresh anointing glory to God in this place there's healing power in this place there's healing power oh, in this place just reach up and say holy ghost holy ghost fall on me there's healing power in this place hallelujah there's delivering power in this place there's delivering power in this place do you need deliverance just tell him holy ghost holy ghost Holy Ghost power, 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 fall down on, on me. That delivering power in this place, there's delivering power in this place. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, come on and fall down on me. That delivering power, some of you need to be delivered in this place. I wish I had some sanctified folk. There's healing power. Y'all ought to help me in this place. See, I know what God can do. There is healing power in this place. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, come on and fall down on me thank you Jesus thank you Jesus glory to God there's healing power in this place do you feel the anointing tonight do you feel the anointing tonight do you feel the anointing tonight take your anointing to your neighbor Put your hand on their shoulder. See what their needs are. Express your needs and begin to minister one to another. We don't come to church just for a show. Not just to be here. We've come to get something from God. I want to get everything I can get from God. Begin to minister out loud to one another. They need your help. Hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord.
you're unsaved, step out from where you are. If you're saved but not active in the church, step out. Step out, the door of the church is open. There's a fresh anointing in this place. The door is open. There's a fresh anointing in this place. Just say this, Holy Ghost, fall down on me. There's a fresh anointing in this place. Fresh anointing, let the anointing fall on you in this place. Help me say it. There is healing power in this place. Every saint said, there is healing power in. If you want to be healed, reach out tonight. Holy Ghost, fall down on me. There's healing power in this place. I wish I could get you to believe God tonight. There is delivering power in this place. Did you come to be delivered? There is delivering power in this place. Just tell him, I die your Holy Ghost fall down on me. There's delivering power.